Let's talk about an even bigger revolution, bigger than anything we've talked about. We talked about music. Music is digitalized. Money is being digitalized now. The next industry to be digitalized is medicine. This is going to change everything. And as David Baltimore once said, Nobel laureate, all medicine, he said, will be reduced to computer science. So let's talk about medicine. How small can you make a chip? We can make a chip so small, you could put it inside an aspirin pill with a TV camera and a magnet. You swallow it and it goes down taking motion pictures of your insides. Because we all know what middle-aged men fear the most. Middle-aged men fear the C word, colonoscopy. And this gives new meaning for the expression Intel inside. In the future, Intel will always be inside. And let's talk about cancer. Believe it or not, we can now attack cancer cell by cell. This is undergoing human trials right now, not monkey trials, not mouse trials, human trials right now, as we take molecules, arm them with poisons, and they seek out individual cancer cells and kill them. One way, for example, is the following. A cancer cell has holes on its walls. The holes are large and irregular. A normal cell has small round holes. Cancer cells have large raggedy holes. We can make a molecule halfway between the two, too big to fit in the small hole of a healthy cell, but small enough to fit right into a cancer cell and kill it. That's one of several mechanisms we have of killing cancer cells one by one. And in the next slide, you will see the miracle weapon that will reduce the word tumor and kick it out of the English language. The next device will conquer cancer because of prevention. Watch. It is your toilet. In the future, your toilet will tell you that you eat too much, too much sugar, too much salt in your diet. Isn't the future wonderful? Even your toilet will tell you that you eat too much. But in this toilet, there's a chip. This chip has all the power of Silicon Valley. These chips are so tiny, they capture DNA. That's how small they are. They can capture DNA fragments from cancer cells, identify cancer, and tell you that you will have cancer in 10 years' time. Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple Computer, died of pancreatic cancer. All the doctors say it's aggressive, incurable, unstoppable, kills you in three to four years. But the genes for pancreatic cancer were sequenced just a few months ago. We found out that that is actually wrong. The cancer which killed the founder of Apple Computer is a slow-growing cancer. 20 years for it to form a tumor which kills you. But only in the last three years do you feel it. You don't feel anything for 17 years, but it's growing inside your body. So in some sense, Steve Jobs died too early. Because with these DNA chips, we can detect cancer years before it forms. So in the future, your toilet will say, you have cancer. Do something. You have 20 years. And in the future, by the way, we can also make mirrors in your bathroom. Bathroom mirrors with DNA chips. This already exists. You blow on it. <sighs> and when you blow on it, it detects the moisture and calculates if you have a mutated P53 gene implicated in 50% of all common cancers. Your bathroom mirror will tell you if you have lung cancer. The word tumor could disappear from the English language. And MRI scans are like the tricorder of Star Trek. But MRI scans are huge. Whoops. MRI scans are huge, gigantic. Why? Why do MRI scans have to be so huge? 
And the reason is the magnetic field has to be uniform. These are called Helmholtz coils. They have to be extremely uniform. But we can use computers to compensate for a weak, irregular magnetic field. In Germany, two physicists invented the world's smallest MRI machine, fully operational, and it's the size of a briefcase. Scientific American interviewed these German physicists, and they said, how small can you make an MRI machine? And the answer is this big. You will have in your cell phone more computer power than a modern university hospital today. And you will have it very soon. The power of an MRI scan inside your cell phone according to the laws of physics. And what will we do with this information? We will scan your DNA. Today it costs a thousand dollars to have every single gene in your body listed. This is an owner's manual for your body. Your laptop, your PC, they all have an owner's manual. Everything you have has an owner's manual except for one thing. You. You have no owner's manual. You will have that owner's manual. And what will we do with it? We will grow organs of the body as they wear out. This is an ear. It's made out of plastic. It's biodegradable. You take cells from your own ear, stick it inside, they proliferate, forming a perfect ear, then the plastic dissolves. This is bone on the left. We can now create almost limited quantity, unlimited quantities of bone. This is cartilage on the right. Ears, noses on the right. And this is the first bladder. An entire bladder grown from your own cells. We can grow heart valves, blood vessels, bone, skin, cartilage, noses, ears with today's technology. And in five years time, we hope to grow the first liver. So in the States, I always say, for you alcoholics in the audience, take heart. We will grow new livers of the body. So as I tell my American audiences, drink up. And even the brain, we're now beginning to crudely image the brain as it thinks. This is the brain on the left as it tells the truth, not much happens. But when you tell a lie, your brain lights up <laughs> like a Christmas tree when you tell a lie. Because you have to know the truth, you have to create the lie, and you have to calculate the consistency of the lie with all the previous lies you've been telling all these years. That's a lot of brain power. And we can now hook up at Brown University a stroke victim who is paralyzed. We put a chip right here right here at the sensory motor cortex, stick it to a computer, and this person who is paralyzed can now play video games, surf the web, write email, answer email, do crossword puzzles, and he is paralyzed. And here's my colleague, Stephen Hawking. He can only blink. That's all he can do. So scientists hooked up a single channel EEG sensor on his right frame of his glasses. Look at his glasses. There's a single channel EEG sensor, picks up brain waves, and allows him to communicate with the outside world. And then, of course, the aging process is the big one. Is it possible that we can stop the aging process? Well, at the present time, probably not. But in the future, there's a definite possibility because we now know what aging is. We didn't even know what aging was a few decades ago. Aging is, in one word, error. Information error. The buildup of error. The accumulated errors in our genes, in cellular debris, all that error makes cells work slower. They get sluggish. That's why skin cells start to sag. That's why muscle loses tone. That's why bone becomes brittle, because air build up. But we can now replace, we can now accentuate air correction mechanism. 
The body has its own error correction mechanism. For example, I didn't know this till I interviewed quite a few biologists. Did you know that some animals never die? They simply age forever. I didn't know that. The animals which don't age are alligators, crocodiles, some sea turtles, and the female flounder. They never get old. They just get bigger, but they never age. Now you say, you might say to yourself, ha, that's not true. I mean, everybody knows that alligators, look at the internet, they live to be 70. But you see, that's when the zookeeper died. No one has ever seen an alligator age. They simply get bigger. Now in the forest, the swamp, they do die. Uh, disease, predators, accidents, starvation, yeah, they die. But in the zoos, they don't die. And take a look at our chimpanzee, our closest evolutionary neighbor. We are 98.5% equivalent to a chimpanzee, but we live twice as long. And we are smarter than a chimpanzee, but only a handful of genes separate us.